I deliberately did not feed you too much unless you asked for a clue because this is actually really important. From here, as soon as you look at the first line, and maybe some of you experience this, you're like, I don't know where to go. I can't, I can't do exactly what we did before. And I hope you understand that moment that you're in of like, oh, I'm sort of pushing in something and I, it's not giving. That's when you're doing real mathematics. When it doesn't feel like you're making very much progress, but you're staring really hard. If I told you really straightforwardly, okay, do this and then this and then this. You are not doing mathematics, you are being a machine. And frankly, the machines will outmachine you, okay? I'm not trying to make you that, I'm trying to help you think. Okay. Look at this line for a second. The most glaring problem that I have that stops me from doing anything with this is that this differs from the original example in a key way. Namely, it's a bit more messy than what I started with. This is a really nice, simple quadratic because it has a one hiding out there. What is it called again? It's monic, right? This could be monic if a is equal to 1, but you don't know that, right? So, as mathematicians love to do, you turn a problem that is difficult and messy into one that you already know how to solve. You don't like there being an a there? That's cool. We can get rid of it. How? Okay, I can divide through, right? Remember that right-hand side is 0. You can divide it by anything you like except 0, and it will stay the same, right? So I'm going to divide everything through. This is what my first line of working would be. Are you happy with that? Do you agree it hasn't been changed? Now I admit, it's a bit of a counterintuitive first step because we usually, I mean we laboured the point this morning that we don't like fractions, we get rid of them everywhere we possibly can. However, what I've traded is the fractions are messy, but now it's monic, right? So I can treat this just like the problem I had before. Okay, let's start to proceed. When I had x squared plus 6x minus 11, what was the first thing I did? I got rid of the 11 over the other side, right? So here is the constant term. You know it's the constant because there's no x terms attached to it. Very good. So that leaves me with an x squared plus b a on x over there and a minus c on a over there. Okay. Now at this point, we added 9. How did you know to add 9? Yes, Lee. Yep. You halved and then you squared. You halved and you squared. You halved and you squared. So what is half of B on A? I think it's B on 2A, right? B on 2A, that's halved and then you square it. Okay, there you go. Now you may well be able to um, square that, halve it and square it in your head and that's good for you, but I've always found algebra things like this really difficult to keep in my head and do accurately. So I've written an extra step. In this case, if you've um, added this, don't forget by the way, you're going to add it over here as well. In this case, I'm actually at a bit of an advantage because if you didn't write this as b squared on 4a squared, which is what happens when you square it, well you can just go straight to this next line. It's already in the form that you want it, isn't it? What's the factorization on the left? x plus b on 2a, and then the whole thing gets squared. Do you agree? There's a look. So we just did the factorization on the left. On the right hand side, you have these two gross guys, but I think they can talk. I think they can talk, because what's this denominator going to be? This one here. It'll be 4a squared, right? So it'll be b squared on 4a squared. That's okay, I can make it talk to that. What am I going to have to multiply numerator and denominator by? It'll be 4a, right? Oh, wait, 4ac, huh, that looks familiar, right? We know where we're headed, right? Whenever you have to prove a result, you should have one eye on the algebra and the other eye on, well, where am I going? Where am I going? And that's a bit of a signal that things are looking good. On 4a squared, and we were adding those, okay? What would you like me to do next? On the left-hand side, I think I'm just going to leave him be for a second. On the right-hand side, the whole point of those common denominators was so that I could combine them. And this one's negative, so I might as well put him second. b squared minus 4ac, that's promising. Do you remember that denominator? It's 4a squared now, but where did it come from again? It came from 2a all squared. That should have set off alarm bells as well, right? If we write that as 2a all squared, Remember what's on the left-hand side? A 
Okay, now just look carefully. Line one, line two, line three, line four, line five. Which of these lines am I up to right now? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll get to that. How do I know? Where, where am I in this proof? I, I think I'm at this line, aren't I? You see I've got something square, and then there's something else on the right-hand side before I get to the square root. Okay, So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That leaves you with this. Okay, on the right-hand side. Oh, good. Plus or minus the square root. So your memory is kicking in. What about the denominator? What's the square root of the square of 2a. It's 2a, right? Now, by the way, let me just point out, I have to be a little bit careful here. This is actually not 100% true because, just suppose, if um, a were equal to negative 5, what's uh, the square root of the square of a? Think about it for a second. Do it one step at a time. You square it and it becomes 25. And then you take the square root, and as we were just pointing out because of x question before, you get 5. That's not a, is it? Right? Why is it OK in this case? There's something I've already written on this line that makes it OK. You already wrote the square. Hmm. See this guy here? This guy here? What this means is I want both of them. I want the plus and the minus, right? So this means, you know what, whichever one you want, I've got them covered. Okay, that plus or minus is kind of what rescues you. Next week we're going to spend a little more time talking about absolute values because in fact, this is one of the definitions of the absolute value function but we'll, we're getting ahead of ourselves so just file that away and we'll come back. Last line, what do I need to do? I'm, I'm pretty much at the quadratic formula, aren't I? I just have to make x the subject which means you just subtract that from both sides. Conveniently, in maths and everything, is, and nothing is a convenience, uh, nothing is a coincidence. I've got two A's, the same denominator, so there is the quadratic formula you know in Bath.